Hello, I'm Diana Rickman, and this is Soul Centered Entrepreneur, your weekly dose of inspiration. Join me for a conversation with health, wellness, and mindset entrepreneurs who share their stories of reaching rock bottom, facing fear or illness, and overcoming difficulties. Learn their secrets to discovering their soul's purpose and creating a calm, confident, emotionally strong life. Hello and welcome to the show. My guest today is Kristen Harper. Kristen is a health and wellness expert, and she's passionate about inspiring people to be healthy, happy, and motivated. She stars herself as a role model and motivator, with a unique connection to her audience that comes from her own personal journey towards wellness and happiness. Because for many years, Kristen struggled with health issues and a disabling eating disorder. Kristen founded her company, Perfect Health Consulting Services, in 2009, with the goal to help people all around the world become healthy. She's a certified nutrition consultant, has a master's in health promotion, and is studying to become a registered dietitian. In our conversation, Kristen shared her story of becoming overwhelmed and controlled by her eating disorder, the positive and simple steps she took daily back to wellness and her love of meditation and its healing benefits. I hope you enjoy our conversation. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. I'm so glad to be on today. We had a few technical issues, didn't we, before? So we've waited a long time to be able to chat together. Yes, and then finally it's working now, the technology. So I'm really happy about this. Yeah, so the time must be absolutely perfect for you to share your story with us. Yeah, that's perfect because over here in Arizona, it's uh, three o'clock in the afternoon. It's a great time to be on the radio. Perfect. Okay, so tell us then a little bit about why you're doing what you're doing, Kristen. I'm always interested in the journey that people take to the the life they're living now. You know, if they would describe their life as being a good life or um, an emotionally strong life, but it's, there's always been a pathway to get to that point. And so I'd love it if you'd share a little bit of that with us. Right. So my goal is to help as many people as possible become healthy. And so my company is Perfect Health Consulting Services. It was uh, founded back in 2009, and it provides hair analysis and increase your vitality programs designed to balance body chemistry naturally. And it's very different from a lot of the healing arts out there that take on more of a symptomatic approach. Hair analysis is a whole systems approach that actually gets to the root cause, addresses the underlying imbalances that are going on in the body. Whether you have a mineral deficiency, whether you have heavy metal toxicity, whether you have an unbalanced oxidation rate, it's all about getting to the root cause and addressing those underlying imbalances. And the reason I got into hair analysis was because I had a lot of health issues, like even all the way back to childhood. And I tried a lot of the healing arts, nothing helped me. And then back in 2001, I got my first hair analysis done and I was able to get healthy through hair analysis. And I still do my hair tests every three to four months. And I follow a very strict healthy diet and a healthy lifestyle but also as far as like emotional strength what's really helped me in addition to the hair analysis and I try to spread the word to people as much as I can but I've been meditating since 2003 and I believe that everyone should be doing meditation because it's non-denominational and it has many benefits but it does keep you strong so if there's like a lot of turbulence and chaos going on in your worlds what's nice about meditation is when you're quieting your mind and you're connecting within you're less affected by outer events that are going on in your life so you're like in a calm place yeah no i I agree with you there it's absolutely it does it sort of it it can put you in a place where stuff that happens to you then even if you're not meditating at that moment later on in the day you've sort of it well it does change your brain waves doesn't it there's science that shows that but i know that the the effects of it are long lasting i wonder though i mean i i meet with a lot of clients who for the first time they can't still their minds and what they will say to me is if I have to sit and meditate all that happens is all those bad thoughts come in and so I know when you've practiced at meditation you know it it can come easy but there are some ways that you can start to practice aren't there 
Yes, yes. What I recommend, and it takes a lot of practice until you eventually get used to it. So what I tell people, especially at the beginning when you haven't done meditation or you're a beginner, it's easy to get distracted where your mind starts to think about other things or maybe what is going to happen tomorrow or you just have thoughts in your head and you get distracted. So what I recommend is like when you're doing your meditation, of course, there's different meditation techniques that you can do. For years, I did deep breathing meditation, but one of the meditations I do now is my hands. So I I like to meditate on my back instead of sitting up. So I'll lay down on my back and then I have my palms facing down. But the meditation I do presently that I really like is feeling the energy in my hands because your hands are rich in nerves. So it's easy to feel the energy in your hands. And so let's say that a beginner, they're doing this type of meditation and then their mind wanders and thinks about something else, what you can do is you can redirect your attention back to your hand. So your mind wanders off, you bring the attention back to your hand. Your mind wanders off, you bring it back to your hand. Okay, that's good advice. So how would you do that with your hands then? Um, And so... I think for a beginner, I think the easiest, I mean, for my hands, I, you know, I kind of transitioned, like when I first started back in 2003 with meditation, I did more of the deep breathing, and now I've transitioned over the years to my hands, but I think for a beginner, what I recommend is the deep breathing, it's just a lot easier, so you can either sit up and, or you can lay on your back, when you do your meditation, you just focus on your breath, you know, inhale and exhale. And then if your mind wanders off, you, f- you bring the attention back to your breath. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think the deep breathing might really help because when I went through an addiction, when I had an eating disorder in the past and I was really struggling, I did the deep breathing meditation. And that's actually one of the meditations that helped me to overcome my eating disorder. But with individuals that are doing meditation, one of the one thing I truly recommend is you have to be consistent. You have to do it every day. You can't just do it one day and then you forget about it for five or six days and you do it again later. It needs, if you want to reap the benefits, it has to be done every day. And if, you know, that's what I recommend. Absolutely. I'm with you on that one. It's uh, that, that whole thing about just setting up a discipline is more than just the the benefits that you get from it in terms of what you're doing physically it's also mentally you start to say to yourself I can do this and I can do it again the next day it shows I think it shows you on a subconscious level that you're able to take back a little bit of control you know you're saying to yourself um, everything else may be chaotic in my life but I can take five minutes once a day at this time every day just to to focus on my breath and it's amazing what that can do for people just that taking back that small amount of control it seems tiny in 24 hours to take five minutes but actually it has a a much bigger effect I find I agree with you 100% it's consistency is the key and you know some people maybe not will not see the benefits like right away but if you're consistent eventually you'll see the benefits it'll happen because when I had my eating disorder, which I had for a long time in my past, I had it for nine years. And when I discovered meditation, I had to do meditation for three years every single day before I was able to stop my addiction. It took three years. So I had to be consistent and not give up, you know, be persistent. But it's also about not skipping a day, being consistent. And eventually my eating disorder vanished. Yeah, I think the other thing that it's very good for that um, I've certainly experienced for myself and I know with clients I mean obviously I'm EFT practitioner and so I am I am sharing a sort of meditation with them but not in the same way that you're talking about but what it does is it brings you back in for a moment and so let's talk about eating for a minute I mean if you've got an eating disorder whether it's um, binge eating or whatever it is if you just take that pause that moment before you then go on to to take part in or indulge yourself in that repetitive habit you take that moment and you bring yourself back into your body and what I've found and I know there's lots of research in this as well is that many people who have some sort of eating disorder they're often very dissociated from their body they they don't feel in their body in any way 
And so to do that type of meditation, that breath, where you're having to focus on something that your body is doing, and then the way your body is moving as you do that deep breathing, yes, it brings you back into your body, doesn't it? Even yes. if it's just for those five minutes. Yes. And that really, that, that connecting again, instead of the disconnect can be the key. Yes, you're totally right because you're disconnected because your mind, your energy is in your mind and you're not yeah. connected within your body. So that brings you back into the present moment and awareness. And also it's a very nurturing and loving thing to do to your body rather than well, I'm going to say the word abusing it really, you mm -hmm. know, if you're using whatever way you might be using food, whether it's through anorexia or binge eating or, or just eating the wrong sort of thing or whatever it is for you, you know, it, this, this is a nourishing and supportive thing to do. You're just talking about breathing, taking a moment and pausing. Yes, definitely. It's so nourishing. There's so many benefits. And I recommend to you, those that are struggling with an eating disorder or any type of addiction, what I found is at the beginning of my eating disorder, I had to do meditation more often during the day because my cravings were so strong like throughout the day. I had, I had craving just frequently. And so, yeah. I, so anytime these cravings came on, that was a, a sign telling, saying, Kristen, get out of your mind, go meditate. And then a craving would come on again later, Kristen, get out of your mind, you need to go meditate instead of, you know, binging on food. And so I had to meditate throughout the day. But then the healthier I became and the more meditation I did, eventually I was able to decrease the frequency of meditation. Yeah. Yeah, and that's again, that's down to the practice, isn't it really? You sort of, you carry the benefits with you for longer. Yes. So the gaps in between the meditation can be bigger. But I would imagine, I mean, you've, you've already said you're still using it as a um, as a practice. And I think the thing is to not see it as a life sentence, as it were, more as a life, a life choice that you've made now in, in the way that you've transformed and continue to support yourself. Yes, yes, absolutely. And, um, and I still, like I said, I still meditate today. And I also recommend all my clients meditate. And I, what I like about meditation as well is that it gives you the discipline to follow a healthy diet and a healthy lifestyle. So I haven't had sugar for over 10 years. And I owe it all to meditation. Because when you meditate, eventually you get to a point where you don't want any unhealthy foods in your body so it gives you the discipline but then there's so many benefits to you it's so healing I mean it will boost your immune system it will relax your nervous system it will enhance your digestion and you know it will stop bad habits and you know addictions and you can feel a sense of inner peace and you can find your life's purpose I mean, just the benefits are just, uh, there's so many. Yeah, and yeah, there are. And I I think sometimes you can hear those sorts of things reeled off. And especially if you're at the beginning of this journey, you just think, how can sitting there quietly, you know, do this? How can it do this? And one of the reasons it can is because you start to, you start to address that fight or flight response that's going on when you meditate, particularly at the beginning of your journey. And if you're using it to help you manage or overcome something and fight or flight and the way it makes our body react as really the what it results in is the things like binge eating or those negative thoughts or the negative behaviors or whatever you're doing to yourself that is not you, you deem as not being good as not desirable. But often you get stuck in that pattern because that little fear response is coming up and your brain has got used to you dealing with that fear response in that particular way. Mm -hmm. And so meditating, you change your brain waves, you change your heart rate because your breathing has changed right. and you're telling your body, I'm no longer in danger. I don't need this fight or flight reaction, which means you don't need to respond by eating something or getting angry or getting upset and overwhelmed or whatever it is. So it's it can have those benefits and long term it has those benefits too. Right. And like you said, and, you know, letting go of these negative thoughts. So what I did was when I was meditating all those years when I was trying to recover from my eating disorder, I wanted to know what was the cause of my eating disorder, what caused these cravings. And 
when I started to meditate and eventually I realized what caused the eating disorder, you become aware of your thoughts when you meditate. And I realized these thoughts were coming in my head saying, Kristen, you are fat, you are fat. And before I never realized those thoughts were there because it was like more, uncon- I, I was not aware of them. And then, when, yeah. and I realized that those thoughts caused my eating disorder. I never realized that until I was doing my meditation. So that's an interesting point, isn't it? Because it's happened so often that you don't hear that little voice, which is actually speaking to you almost constantly, <laughs> but you just don't hear it. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it totally destroyed my life. The eating disorder really, truly did. I mean, I couldn't hold jobs. I'd have cravings to go binge on food and I had to quit my job because I would go to a job and then all of a sudden I'm working and then these cravings would just come come up and they were so intense I couldn't focus on my work and I, I ha- have to leave work to go binge on food and I was in isolation I didn't want to be around friends family I didn't want to go into public I thought I was fat I had poor body image I had uh, numerous skills at my house, constantly weighing myself throughout the day, like not, I was like obsessed with it. And then it was just, it was just like chaotic. I mean, it was like the cycle of you binge and you feel bad about yourself after doing that. And then you go diet because you want to lose weight because you're scared you're going to gain weight from binging on the food and you go back to dieting and then you binge and then dieting binge. It was just chaotic. And then I remember going to the gym for hours after I'd binge because I was scared I was going to gain weight and then I injured my knee in time from all the exercise. So eating disorders are, are rough. It sounds exhausting actually. Yes, it consumes your entire life. So for you, I'm interested then, what what was the spark that made you realize that, that perhaps that you could take back control over this, but that also, you know, you're, I suppose you're rock bottom. What point did you get to where you thought, I've got to change this? Right. So that, uh, good questions. So for me, I, as far as like when I rock, I hit, you know, the bottom, um, I would say it got so bad to the point where I couldn't even hold jobs. I was in isolation. I locked myself up in my bedroom like all day long. And I, I, I wanted to lock myself up in my bedroom because I didn't want to go downstairs and start binging. And I didn't want to be around people. And I got to the point, it was so low. I had many thoughts of suicide. I never attempted anything, but I had thoughts all the time. I just want to commit suicide. I don't want to live like this anymore. And I went into a, a eating disorder treatment center. I saw a counselor. I went to support groups. I went to church. I saw a nutritionist in California, saw a hypnotist in California, saw holistic practitioners, read books. I I did so much. And I had this one friend and he told me, Kristen, you need to stop seeking answers from outside of yourself, all these different solutions. And the truth comes from within. And he did have a point. And what happened was I came across a book. So I was like at the very bottom. I mean, wanted to commit suicide. I didn't want to be around people. I couldn't hold jobs. I was binging. I felt fat. It consumed my entire life. All I could focus on was being fat, binging on food, dieting, uh, vigorous exercise. That was like my whole world. It was like chaos. And then I came across this book after years of struggling with my eating disorder, and it's called The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. He's a spiritual teacher. And I read the book and it made sense to me right away. I got it. I understood what was happening to me. So Eckhart Tolle, it's like his book is like one of my favorite books of all time. I love him. And he talks about how we need a quieter mind and connect within. And so I read the book and then he has certain techniques in his book that you can do to quiet your mind. So there was a few that I did. Uh, For example, um, I did the deep breathing that I told you about. And then Mm -hmm. another one that I did that I I, that I did when I had when I was trying to recover from my eating disorder was walking meditation where you go out in nature and you, you go out in a quiet place with no distractions and you walk really slowly and you focus on every step 
And that, that actually quiets your mind. It's a form of meditation and it brings energy down into your body, kind of like you were talking before of being present and being aware. Yeah. So I did, yeah. I did that meditation. And then also another thing is just be, being present in your body and being aware. So like anything that you're doing, like any activities during the day, you just focus the attention in your body. So you kind of get it out of your mind, but you're focusing in your body. So like, let's say you're gardening or you're washing dishes you feel the energy in your hands when you're doing activities. That's a form yeah. of meditation because you're bringing the energy out of your mind and down into your body. I love that you say that. I really do. Because, again, coming back to that point, so many people think meditation is about sitting there with candles and incense and saying a mantra. And, you know, but it's not. It can be so many other ways. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, so I did those three meditation techniques during my recovery and then and I was really I, I was consistent I did them every single day and like I said at the beginning I had to do them do it the meditation more frequently but after three years cravings vanished I overcame my eating disorder and found peace I'm so glad that you did that's just wonderful it's wonderful to hear your story and also I think really just to honor the time that you took for yourself and that wisdom that you had, you know, your ability to just stop and listen to the wisdom that you had inside you, that you could change this and, and being open. There's a point you get to when you're open to listening to somebody else and maybe that little spark and then you run with it and that's what you've done. Yes. And you know what I believe too is, you know, people that suffer out there and go through hardship, I believe that there's good that comes out of it in a way and it's it's not fun going through it but then once you overcome it there's blessings because I feel like I've because I've gone through a lot of hardship in my life but I look back and I feel even like presently I feel that I have so much wisdom it's unreal the wisdom that I have to where I see things that a lot of other people do not see at all because I had to go through so much hardship in my life yeah yeah, I mean, it would be lovely if you didn't have to go through the hardship. Oh, right. <laughs> no. You know, you could just download it, you know, just, okay. <laughs> and I'd like to be wise in this area, please. <laughs> yeah. And it'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> but, but also, I don't know if you believe in this or not, but I believe also, I actually believe in destiny. And there's reasons for it because I've gone through certain experiences in my life that now I understand that destiny does exist. So I do believe in destiny that we choose events um, at times, like even before we're born, that we, we choose events to go through for certain reasons, like maybe learning lessons or yeah, other reasons. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I certainly, myself, I believe that the choice is at the is the key to it all, really. Whatever happens, whatever anybody else does to us, we had that choice about how we react and how we take right. that on board. I think the problem comes from, from a very young age, we're given the impression that we don't have choice, you know, and I, I speak from experience of being a kindergarten teacher and working with primary school children and preschoolers and just seeing how in, the, in, in institutions really, in schools and things, how we set children up from a very young age that they don't have choice, you know, they, mm -hmm. they need to conform and they need to, to take part. And I just mm -hmm. wonder sometimes with those little brains, you know, they, they're such lateral thinkers that they apply that same logic to everything, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's about just reminding ourselves that actually we do, we have a choice over everything. We mm -hmm. do have mm -hmm. a choice, mm -hmm. you know? It's All right. If, even if it seems like we don't, within any situation, you have a choice in how you react, how you That's take true. on board what people say, and That's what true. you make that mean about you. It's true. It's really true. Right. And I believe that we have to take personal responsibility for ourselves, whatever comes our way. And we, we all deserve ha like inner peace and, and being healthy. Yeah. Everyone deserves that. So I'm just wondering then, Kristen, if people wanted to work with you, what would be the best way to get in contact with you? Yeah, the um, best way would be to go to my website. If you're wanting to work with me one-on-one -on -one and do a virtual coaching session and we can 
I can review your hair analysis. My website is perfecthealthconsultingservices.com. And also, I just wanted to mention my uh, speaking website. I do speaking engagements also on health and wellness. And my speaking website is kristenharperspeaks.com. Great. And I'll put the links in the show notes as well and so people don't have to worry about the spelling. So my question for you then is, what does emotional strength mean to you? Because I know we've touched on this as we've been speaking here, but really it's it's the it's why I create this podcast and yeah I just wonder for you personally now what does it mean right I actually believe I kind of link that more to a meditation that's how I see it so if you're you're doing your meditation you'll have the strength to be less affected by outer events and you'll be a, a strong person. You'll have power. So anything that comes your way, any chaos, or maybe someone that's extremely rude to you during the day that hurts your feelings or something, you're, you're basically, um, you have the strength because you, you, know, you practice your meditation every day. So it's not going to affect you. And like you said, you know, um, We have choices, so are you going to let someone who says something that's not nice to you, is that going to ruin your day, or are you going to be in control and have that power to say, that's not going to affect me? So that's that's what I believe, and I, like I said, I, I believe, you know, everyone should be doing the meditation. There's so many benefits. And it will keep you strong through life. When there's ups and downs, it's going to keep you strong. And you'll have um, inner peace. And, you know, you'll live in the present moment. And there's, you know, and like I said, there's so many benefits. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us today and just giving us all your wisdom and these wonderful tips. And I hope everybody is just going to start meditating now (laughs) i hope so too and i I appreciate the opportunity today it was a pleasure to talk to you i'm diana rickman and you've been listening to soul-centered entrepreneur did you enjoy this episode if you did please subscribe so you'll never miss an episode and you'll get all the inside info about my guests and even more amazing resources to help you create a calm confident emotionally strong life plus some personal insights from me that I only share through email. Come on over to dianarickman.com and sign up for email updates. It's my passion to support and help courageous people just like us who are committed to changing their behavior and habits. Do you have a goal or dream you're working towards? Remember, you have everything you need inside of you right now. Choose to get focused, seek out inspiration and ask for support. Thank you for listening and supporting the show and I look forward to sharing with you next time.